I'm going to first start with a little bit about meta learning in humans, and then we're going to try to scaffold this understanding to AI systems. So, a little bit about human metacognition, two parts, it's the monitoring and the control of cognitive processes, and just to sort of map this onto our own personal understanding, metacognitive control refers to the act of regulation of a cognitive process or state to either activate it or suppress something such as to control your attention or try to engage in some learning strategy to, to improve your learning outcomes. Now, on the other hand, metacognitive monitoring refers to the ability to recognize an internal state in order to then regulate those states. Meta-learning is a subcategory of metacognition, and it refers to the monitoring and control of your own learning processes. Now, some examples. Uh, Self-assessment helps us to identify gaps in our own learning, our own knowledge, or areas where errors are more common. This allows us to then prioritize certain areas of learning. So, for example, a student they have flashcards, can prioritize knowledge they find more challenging instead of prioritizing knowledge they already know. This really helps your learning outcomes. Metacognitive reflection, I'm not sure if you're familiar with exam wrappers, but after an exam, you can wrap it up by trying to reflect on uh, your performance during the exam and your performance during studying to see what strategies worked, what strategies of learning didn't work, and how to then adjust your strategies in the future for better outcomes. You know. One meta-learning example par excellence is uh, you know, scientific methodology. A scientist may be trying to study some phenomenon, you know, cognitive effects of some medication, for example, and they put out a survey to try to gain quantitative data, getting people to rate you know, their experience on a scale. They may then realize that this is not reaching some, some outcome in terms of trying to understand how the medication affects people. They then add qualitative data or questions to the survey in order to then improve their, their learning goals. So they're recognizing a limit in a learning strategy and then they're adapting their learning mechanisms in order to then uh, better achieve their learning goals. So here's a famous framework in cognitive psychology where you have first order learning and this is called the object level and meta level is that second order process, the meta level where you are able to then refer to the learning process itself instead of just going about learning automatically and achieving not the full measure of your potential in terms of learning. Referring to the strategies themselves gives you a higher order ability to then control them. You're able to then monitor the learning outcomes and the strategies and then control them in order to attain a higher order power in order to do this. Now it's important to recognize you can even go up orders of meta-knowledge. You know, there's first order which refers to the strategies and then there's second order which we're here right now, we're referring to first order meta learning and we're then able to then use them on a higher level and control our meta learning processes more explicitly. So these are the two mechanisms or the two frameworks I'll be importing here, this meta level framework and dual system metacognition, which was touched on a bit yesterday. And by combining these two, this is one way of helping to understand meta learning and then importing it into AI systems. So we talked about system one and system two and how system one, system two metacognition is not the same. That's true. That's an important distinction. And neither is meta learning, which is a subcategory. And it seems that a lot of cognitive processes do have these two types of characteristics of uh, processes. And Danny Kahneman popularized this, but he was, of course, not the creator. Evans was one of the initial developers of the system one, system two type distinction. And he said, people are starting to overload the system two category, which they just kind of put everything in there, uh, conceptual knowledge, conceptual metacognition. And Evans suggested maybe we should have a type three or even more uh, processes that help us to understand this with, with greater subtlety. But I'm gonna be talking a bit about metacognition system one and two, because this is, this is crucial. And this is something that's sort of been under-researched and under-explored that monitoring and control processes can be driven by two types of information. System two, conceptual metacognition, explicit declarative concepts, propositionally structured, symbolic, explicit information types. They're slow, they're deliberate, they're more conscious, more far-sighted. You know, a student can conceptually recognize that they should prioritize topics they find difficult to learn in a symbolic fashion. 
System 1, procedural metacognition, is more non-conceptual information types where monitoring and control are directed by implicit representations that are faster, more automatic, more characterized as being unconscious, nearsighted. We all know what it's like to be reading and you have an implicit feeling that I don't really understand that. That feeling then directs you to then read it again and read it again until you do understand it and then you continue reading down the page until you reach another feeling that you don't understand something. So this implicit feeling is one metacognitive information type within human psychology that directs our monitoring and control and so do uh, conceptual processes and they seem to have an important distinction that uh, can be useful for our purposes. In terms of skill learning, the ability to get better at monitoring, the ability to get better at control uh, in terms of your metacognitive processes, uh, including better learning, has been considered a process by which system two conceptual processes migrate through practice to become system one operations. So system two concepts through practice, through monitoring and control, uh, rehearsal becomes embedded within your automatic processes that become just automatic operations that get woven into the deep fabric of the brain and a student can, for example, recognize that they are better at learning in the morning. And by conceptually recognizing that, they can then go about this process until it just becomes an automatic habit. And this has been modeled in ACTAR, the process of proceduralization, where the repeated practice of a strategy until it becomes automatic is this very important aspect of skill learning where explicit strategies in declarative memory become compiled into automatic production rules to make them faster and more unconscious. Here's a chart by Kim and Ritter, which shows how these processes can, can go about uh, initially beginning as declarative representation types to then become proceduralized. And this has been modeled in motor task learning, cognitive tasks, and something our lab has been specifically focused on, which is metacognitive skill learning, where you can get better at directing your own cognitive processes. And these two frameworks, meta-learning and system one, system two, and combining them is sort of our contribution here, where we go about understanding how there's object level learning and, and meta-level learning, and that how system two operations can become proceduralized to become automatized, to become fast, implicit, automatic operations that improve the performance of humans. Currently, AI is not particularly great at metacognitive processes. Why? Well, we're saying that a lot of its metacognitive abilities are implicit, they're, they're tacit. In terms of learning to learn, humans are quite good at this. We can get better at reflecting and adjusting our own learning strategies, but AI doesn't really possess this kind of ability, and it isn't able to explicitly represent its own learning processes. In terms of self-assessment, AI lacks the ability to critically assess its own performance, or the reliability of its outputs in many domains. <clears throat> it can't really judge when it might be making an error or uh, when it seeks, when it needs to seek human intervention. And so humans in a lot of cases are, in terms of LLMs, the metacognitive agent. We input prompts to direct its computational processes and it can't do a lot of these things itself. It also doesn't, in most cases, understand its own limitations. It doesn't really understand the boundaries of its knowledge and it can't seek to fill in those, those gaps as a result, and that's, that's a huge limitation. Now, LLMs such as ChatGPT, trained on extensive databases, they do have some metacognitive abilities from a lot of their own training data. They can output metacognitive suggestions as part of their answers. So we asked, for example, ChatGPT uh, some advice on writing a, a scientific abstract, and its suggestions did have many uh, metacognitive reference. So for example, it told us to maintain a clear focus on our objective and what we want to communicate. It said to organize your thoughts. It said to approach your writing with an organized plan, to think before you actually act. So these are some metacognitive suggestions, but it doesn't really possess robust self-directed learning abilities. Uh, it relies on human designed algorithms, training data, prompts, generating output, and it needs the greater development of the self-assessment abilities, self-modification, autonomous learning strategies, and meta, it's important to recognize that meta is used in many different ways. It's sort of an overloaded term right now. Meta can refer to explicit self-reference, it can refer to aggregate information, it can refer to many different things. So it's important to understand what you mean by meta in the first place. In, in terms of uh, LLMs, it largely refers to enhancing a model's ability to generalize across tasks 
and to adapt to new challenges. There's meta-learning where a model yeah, improves its algorithms based on previous experience. There's meta-optimization where even the optimization processes themselves get optimized. Meta-reinforcement learning, so on and so forth. But this isn't what humans do so much. This is not exactly what happens in human psychology. We don't have training data in the same way for meta-learning. We don't run simulations in the same way. Humans are mostly rely on system two explicit strategies. This seems to be our distinctive mode of, of meta-learning. We can just hear or read a meta-level uh, strategy from teachers, from books, from wherever, and then we can just apply it immediately. We can apply it across domains. We don't need training in the same way. And skilled human system two meta-learning requires practice to get better at it, but this involves proceduralization, and so this is one way of understanding meta-learning and how it exists in human beings as a way of starting to, you know, maybe conceptually bootstrap this understanding onto computational systems. It does seem to have an explicit value, or explicit knowledge rather, does seem to have its own distinctive value. It enhances reasoning, it integrates explicit knowledge, can allow for improved inferences, deduction, the understanding of complex relationships, better problem solving, alpha and geometry is recently uh, seen to this, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. It allows for faster adaptation to new domains and tasks. Uh, incorporating new explicit knowledge allows LLMs, for example, to adapt to novel domains more, more rapidly. And meta-learning strategies allows for conceptual bootstrapping, where we can use known concepts to scaffold uh, the learning of new related concepts, allows for better analogical reasoning and you know, metacognitive modeling, allowing us to reflect on our own learning processes, symbolic representations and reasoning, explicit common sense reasoning. It allows for a distinctive utility that's crucial for us to understand better. And this ability to go from system two explicit strategies to system one automatic operations seems to be something that is distinctly human and could be especially useful in AI systems. So here's a quick flow chart for how this might be developed where yeah, the model would identify some learning task. It would select an appropriate learning strategy. It would then apply this learning strategy, evaluate the outcome. Is it effective? No, negative reward. If yes, positive reward. And this is one way that explicit metacognitive strategies can become embedded into automatic implicit operations through this sort of meta-level reward function. Yes? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay, good, thank you very much. So self-initiated learning in this sense would be able to allow for it to analyze outputs of errors, realize gaps in its own performance, uh, errors where there are biases or where its learning objectives are not being fulfilled. It could then identify when it needs to change its strategies or change its goals. And so through repeated practice, through meta-level rewards, these explicit strategies can become proceduralized over time, improving the model's ability to act autonomously to improve its capabilities with less human interaction. And this is one way that we can understand where AI is heading in terms of the direction in which it's moving towards greater self-reference, self-monitoring, better self-control, and self-learning. Now, two models that are worth uh, talking about. This just came out this year. QuietStar were standard chatbots. They, uh, they don't really think much about their outputs. While QuietStar was given an inner monologue, that actually doubled its reasoning performance in some areas. It was able to generate inner rationales before uh, responding to a prompt to figure out which was the best one. And so the utility of metacognition really enhances performance. And this is one example of how you know, metacognitive or, or this meta-level framework is shown to have a distinct utility. On the other hand, in terms of this dual system framework. Alpha geometry is a neural language model and symbolic deduction engine that achieved a gold rating at the International Math Olympics. This is related to the thinking fast, thinking slow framework where system one provides fast intuitive ideas where the other provides more deliberate rational decisions and the combination of these two seems to provide for an increase in performance. So at the moment, AI technologies are limited in their ability to self-monitor, self-represent, self-control compared to human intelligence, which we just do naturally, implicitly. And by understanding these two processes, this meta-level framework and the dual system metacognition, and especially the, the process by which system two meta-learning becomes system one, we can help to 
increase these autonomous learning abilities in AI. And uh, we think it's a promising approach for further development in AI. And yeah, I'd be happy to hear any questions about this. Thank you.